The phrase medicinal plants in and of itself is very intuitive. As humans have been using plants for medicinal purposes for thousands of years, it makes sense that this would be intuitive. But at the same time, there's so much in this category that so broad that a 15 minute introduction is really just going to be that, an introduction. So in this presentation, we're going to really focus on several types of important medicinal plants that have been used for the last couple hundred years, and also focus a little bit on the history and development of medicinal plants. So starting off, I think while medicinal plants is very intuitive, it's also very broad. So let's break it up a little bit into several key defining characteristics that were defined in our research. One of these is direct extracts, a way to use a medicinal plant. And I think in Western cultures, it's very normal to use direct extracts such as teas for medicinal purposes. Another culture, the Incas and indigenous people to South America, use coca leaves. And these coca leaves are chewed to treat altitude sickness. The picture of the coca, leaf, coca plant can be seen on the right. Another way to use plants as medicine is by u collecting plants as starting materials. Then these plant plants are processed to become a finished medicinal product. The third way that was really outlined in research was a chemical structure template. So this uses the plant and identifies and singles out whatever chemical structure really creates the impact on humans that we are desiring. For example, in willow bark, the silicis cortex is the extract. And this was found um, to have a lot of great properties in humanity, and today it's actually known as aspirin. So while it is chemically synthesized, the drug itself would not exist without analyzing and replicating this chemical structure that was found in willow bark. On the bottom right, you can see a photo of the genus Silicis, in which Silicis cortex falls. So as I said earlier, plant medicine has been around for thousands of years. So traditional medicine, and all medicine actually, originates in, from Africa. So traditional African medicine is the oldest and most diverse and an extremely intricate medicinal system. And this makes sense because humans first evolved in Africa, but also it leads to there not being an exact time in which we know that this traditional medicine system developed. Another very old medicine system is the North American. And this illness is approached by indigenous healers from both spiritual and physical sides. And these healers or shaman rely on lots of dancing, rituals, and complex herbal remedies to heal and expel email, evil that they believe causes these physical ailments. Now we're going to get into some of the earliest documented forms of traditional medicine. So as we know that Native American and African traditional medicine are actually older than these, we don't have the concrete documentation, or I was not able to find this. So one of the oldest traditional documented medicines is the Chinese herbalism text. And this was published around uh, 2800 BC. And then these herbal re remedies are usually mixtures of 20 plus herbs that are outlined in this herbalism. Many traditional medicines are still used in hospitals in this area of the world alongside with the modern medicine. So it's very interesting just to see how such an old medicinal system still has many impacts on today. Another very old medicinal system is the Ayurvedic, which are herbal remedies mentioned in the religious text, the Veda. And in this medicinal system, they believe that health is a result of the inner balance or imbalance of prana, which is the life energy force. So health is then seen as a physical manifestation of inner harmony, and this uses herbal remedies to create balance. And then finally, traditional Western medicine was outlined around 400 before Christ, and it's also known as Galenic medicine. So this started with Aristotle and um, Hippoc Hippocrates, sorry about that. 
And this is an elemental system. It is very similar to the Ayurvedic system because it operates off the premise that health is a reflection of inner harmony. But where it differs a little is that it's inner harmony between the four elements of the world, which were air, fire, water, and earth. So the first European, European herbal was published in 100 AD, and by 800 AD, medicinal plants were being actively cultivated in Western culture. After hearing about all of this traditional medicine, one might wonder, why is it important today? Because modern medicine is so much different than traditional medicine, and while that medicine focused a lot on the spiritual aspects also, more modern medicine focuses on the scientific aspects. So one might think then, in modern medicine, that actually herbal remedies and medicinal plants are kind of obsolete. But that's simply just not true. Because 80% of the world still depends on traditional medicine, which is exemplified by the global herbal medicine market, which has an incredible economic value of $60 billion, US dollars. Additionally, in the US, 25% of prescriptions were plant-based in 1980, and in Western medicine, 89% of plant-based drugs were just 89, sorry, 89 of plant-based drugs were discovered by studying indigenous knowledge. As one can see, the medical impacts of plants is not just of economic importance, but is of such importance of the collective well-being of humanity. Folk knowledge can be a huge indicator of whether a plant has medicinal properties. And by studying a variety of indigenous systems, we can continue to make advancements in modern medicine. It's crucial that we take the time to learn about how different cultures utilize herbs. This was emphasized in a study done by Shaman Pharmaceuticals, in which it was found that 75% of the time, the uses of plants by folk healers were aligned with the found medicinal properties. In order to find a plant's medicinal properties, creating a bioassay may be helpful. A bioassay is a quick and efficient way to assess the chemical structure of a botanical. Though an expensive process, the bioassay yields important data such as determining a plant's bioactivity. It's important to realize that there are hundreds of botanicals that have had a profound effect on the field of medicine. But in this presentation, we will only name a few. Peruvian bark, or C. officinalis, was discovered around 1630 in Peru. Spanish invaders discovered this after hearing stories about a tree that indigenous people used to treat fevers. During the 17th century, the demand for this particular botanical increased dramatically which sparked an increase of awareness about the potential medicinal uses of plants. The health benefits of Peruvian bark were very inconsistent early on. This was due to the fact that people did not know that the quinine had to be extracted from the bark in order to, to efficiently utilize the plant's medicinal properties. Regardless, the bark did prove to be an extremely helpful treatment for malaria. Due to the botanicals increasing popularity, South American countries such as Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, and Bolivia were able to export Peruvian bark and make significant profit. For example, in 1800, 6 million pounds of Peruvian bark was exported from Colombia to Europe. However, this botanical was, was eventually monopolized by the Dutch in 1930. Peruvian bark continued to be extremely relevant to the world. During the Second World War, many Allied soldiers contracted malaria because the Axes controlled the source of quinine, resulting in a 10% morality rate for those who contracted malaria. Turmeric, or C. longa, dates all the way back to India in 4000 BC. This botanical was initially used as a dye but was later used for its ability to cure jaundice and venereal disease, and for its ability to combat mental disorders. Currently, we see that it's mostly used as a dietary supplement for respiratory infections, digestive disorders, liver disease, depression, and arthritis. It's clear that society has become dependent on plants, 
but in order to reap more medicinal benefits, it's important that we become aware of how we should go about collecting and researching these botanicals. Due to overextraction, the availability of medicinal botanicals is declining. This is extremely problematic, especially for communities that practice traditional healthcare systems, such as Ayurveda and Siddha, because traditional healthcare systems rely on herbal medicines such as caraway, which is used for its antibacterial properties, and Caesarea costus. Additionally, it's important to recognize that there are still hundreds upon thousands of plants yet to be discovered. In fact, in the Amazon, 1% of plants' chemical properties have been studied, and 90% of all plants haven't even been through a primary screening. We call this the undiscovered pharmaceutical factory. Having a limited supply of botanicals, it's important that we find that balance between conservation and biological curiosity.